The most significant impact is the massive um, excitement and engagement of scores of students and teachers within whole schools, within whole districts. So this uh, unleashing of uh, energy, this palpable engagement, this excitement that students can't contain when they go home to talk to their parents, uh, that's been the, by far the biggest, the biggest impact. Uh, what remains to be done, and we're working on this with these systems, is okay, it's engagement, it's exciting, it's, uh, it, it is bound to be good and a lot of learning, but really what are the outcomes and how do we get a better handle on what other impacts on our literacy and numeracy doing better? Our students who are in the applied area uh, in grade nine math, are they doing better? Disadvantaged students, special education students. So there's a, there's a lot of things still to be done, but we know we've raised the energy level, the engagement level, and people are deeply committed. And of course, one of the big issues in change usually is what do our resistance or do people buy into it? Buy-in isn't even a question for us and for them. They, they're bought in. What is the question is, how do you fulfill it? We wanted to uh, have a big enough uh, uh, platform, a world arena, whatever. So we've got now, uh, we're just about to get 10 countries. So Australia, uh, Canada, uh, Finland, Netherlands, uh, New Zealand, uh, the three other Scandinavian countries, Denmark and uh, Sweden and Norway are about to join as a three, and then Uruguay and the United States. So what we have learned is that this work appeals to the world. Whether you're Uruguay struggling to become you know, solid as a country, or whether you're Finland who is one of the high, high, is one of the high runners, doesn't matter. This is the common, uh, the common interest is that. So this is appropriate because we are talking about global and to be global is not to just be global in your own mind. You have to be global interactively with the, with the planet. So, so what we're learning about it is all of these countries, different languages, different uh, curriculum and says, different traditions, they're finding common ground in uh, deep learning uh, without question. The question of uh, how this work uh, feeds into future prosperity, I think I would say it's probably an open question because it's hard to think about, uh, okay, this will get us because we know the problems are mammoth. Uh, the problems of the job market, the rise of robots, the uh, conflict in the world, uh, this uh, huge uh, uncertainty. But I'm pretty confident, having seen it bubble up from kindergarten upward, that we are producing with this work, the system is producing with this work, uh, students who, uh, it, one of the amazing things about it is how uh, sophisticated an eight-year-old can be about world issues once they get into this. And so the big surprise is the underutilized power of the young mind and the emotional part that comes with that of wanting to better society. So I'm gonna keep the hypothesis as a question mark, as an hypothesis about whether this work leads to greater prosperity, but I'm also gonna be comfortably say that we are in the center of this uh, development, that this is about future prosperity. This is about dealing with uh, intrinsic unknowns for the future and making, making them more known through the actual learning uh, um, work that people do and how equipped they are to work uh, uh, together and how much they are solving real problems in the short run that are actually human problems. So I think this, uh, this is, the, that's why I think it's the most exciting thing we've ever seen in education in terms of its transform transformative power. Well, Hearts and Minds is, uh, in, in uh, the study of uh, neurology, I mean, it's pretty evident that they, uh, that what we used to think of as separation is they feed on each other. Uh, so I think the moment you get in trouble is when you start teaching them as if they were separate. So even the work on social, uh, emotional development, SEL work, we are seeing that on the rise because people are saying the, the cognitive work is not good enough, we have to have the social emotional development. And literally that's true. But once you segment it and you have, let's say, a course or a, or a project on SEL, you've lost the plot because you have to, you have, in order to be effective as uh, social emotionally, you have to be effective cognitively and vice versa. So what, what, what we strive for 
is that the heart and the mind are not only both there, but they are feeding on each other in a synergistic way. The work that Paul Tuff talks about in terms of grit and how children succeed, we are now figuring out how those that before would never have succeeded are going to succeed now.